Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it is that you're watching this. This is some good education news from the Utah Education Network. I'm Danny Sloan. I'm one of the technology trainers here at UEN. In some good education news, we're sharing good news from what's happening in education all around Utah. To kick off this second episode, we've reached out to the community to find some good news stories, and here's a special one to start off the day. Coach Tessa Rocco from Bonneville Junior High School and Cottonwood High School had a creative way to close out coaching this year. We were doing a 30 day burpee challenge. My neighbor was doing it, so I thought it would be a fun thing to do. I also thought it would be fun for the girls basketball team to do as a team challenge where they could support each other and still get a workout in during this time when we can't get together. I also thought it would be good for them to set a goal and work together to reach it. Nurses entering the medical field are facing a different reality than those who came before them because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Davis Tech couldn't hold a traditional pinning ceremony. However, they got creative and they held a drive-in pinning ceremony, complete with student speakers and photo opportunities. Now, in pinning tradition, a loved one places the honorary pin on the graduate to celebrate. Industrial hygiene may not be a career field that you're very aware of, but it is in high demand. Utah State University is one of only four in the nation to offer certification at the undergraduate level. Carl Farley, a senior lecturer in the Department of Biology's Public Health Program, reports that students are securing employment well before graduation. With the COVID-19 pandemic, employers are more concerned about their employee safety than ever, and demand is expected to grow even more. It's a science rigorous program that allows for students also to choose if they want to go into a health profession type program, medical school or dental school, or if they want to go on to a graduate program in public health. Let's share a few more highlights. High school teacher Dr. Chris Sloan from Judge Memorial Catholic High School used his students' words to write a song. He picked up his guitar, he took to YouTube to salute the class of 2020. In this dark time, somehow you shined, you got this. this year looked a whole lot different, but for some, it was better than ever. Teachers, students, administrators at Granger High School and across the state celebrated by having graduation parades rather than the traditional ceremony. Now, this allowed for everyone to safely distance while also celebrating the amazing accomplishments. Teachers said that this was awesome and super fun and something they'd like to see continue in the future. Now, our world has changed even just from our last episode. Black Lives Matter is now front and center. To talk with us about anti-racism and education, we have Bridgette Barrows. She is a special education teacher here in Utah, and she's taken to Twitter to talk about issues of race and racism with other teachers. Welcome to Some Good Education News. Bridgette, how are you? I'm doing great, Danny. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. We know you're a special education teacher. Let's hear about you. You know, I have been in the teaching profession for quite a few years now. I started out as a substitute teacher with Salt Lake City School District when my kids were little and helping out in the classroom. Um, been very involved with the National PTA and Utah PTA. Um, done a lot of educational things around the Valley volunteer basis that I enjoy. This job that I have right now, been at for four years, went back to school back in 2010 to get my degree and my master's in education. And just, I uh, love teaching and working with kids. Going into the fall, we're gonna have a lot of important conversations that we need to have with our kids. One of those conversations is going to be about anti-racism. What can we do to have these important conversations in the classroom? or I guess it might be online. We don't know what it's gonna look like, but what can teachers do to have those conversations with their students? Well, I believe uh, listening is a good place to start. Uh, we have um, a lot of educators 
you know, coming to the table and just wanting to discuss things and talk about um, some of the important things. And we have we need to learn to listen and understand where everyone is coming from. Um, I don't like to use the word immigrant for me for myself. I don't know why, but I always want to tell people that I have a different culture I came from. And and once you get to know someone and know where they're coming from, and that's through listening, that really helps to uh, set the tone to have a dialogue or conversation on what we need to do because we don't have the answers. Nobody has the answers. But through listening and having conversations and talking to one another and understanding where other people are coming from, I think we'll begin to target the um, a movement to the solution. Nobody has a solution right now. That's why there's so much confusion and so much, um, you know, um, unrest going on. I love that you mentioned like teach and reteach. Something that we're really working on is learning and unlearning things. Um, how, how do we get students to know that it's okay to change, to change their minds, how they view things in the world, their opinions? Um, sometimes it's really hard for it to feel okay to do that. Again, understanding, I mean, listening. I always go back to those basics and giving them a chance to voice their opinions too and express themselves. Because when we're teaching them, we're giving them skills, hopefully giving them the skills they need to thrive, to become better contributors to society, to be well informed, to be well educated, well, you know, better informed, make decisions, you know. And I believe that sharing with them and hearing their voice and listening to where they're coming from as well, again, it's that dialogue and that coming to the table. I love that, Bridget. I think that's an awesome viewpoint. So there's something else that you've become involved in recently. Um, there's a Twitter chat. Do you want to tell us about that Twitter chat? Yes, we uh, we're not going with the hashtag U R U T chat. That is okay. a new um, hashtag that we've been going with, and this is um, a group of educators coming to the table across the nation. We're all coming, trying, working hard at coming together to have a dialogue. We know what's been happening in the last couple of months. It's been happening for so long, but I've never seen anything like this in my whole life. So, and I'm sure that's new to most teachers, most educators, or most people. So this chat is bringing all the uh, educators, all educators are invited to join. Uh, it's peer headed by Matthew Winters, helped by uh, Brooke Anderson, so those okay. two are working hard to get. I think we I believe we're using Matthew's platform on Twitter to okay. move this message across. So we're bringing all educators together to talk about this, have a dialogue, share what you know, unlearn what you don't need, move forward with what we need to do because we need to be ready for for fall. We need to be ready when schools open whether it's online or actual classrooms. We need to have some answers for our, for our children. We're, we're responsible, that's a huge responsibility on us as teachers, as educators. So we do need to have some kind of a dial that's not gonna upset or cause more confusion. We wanna educate these kids, so we need to have some, and we're gonna learn from them too, because they're in homes right now. They're in the same society, they're learning, they're seeing things happening. So we're gonna learn from them too, but as, as the leaders and educators, as the adults, we need to have some kind of a dialogue, a positive dialogue in place so that when schools open, we can have some answers to begin guiding us in the right place that we need to go with our students. Absolutely. And I think too, um, some educators might feel uncomfortable talking about race and racism. And this might be a nice way to kind of start feeling more comfortable because we obviously need to be doing more of that kind of dialogue like you're talking about with our students. Absolutely, Danny. I think that's the, that you, you nailed it too. That's the biggest part of it because everyone is so uncomfortable or most people are uncomfortable. So by the time we have all this conversation going when school starts, I hope that that uncomfortable situation of spot we're in would have been relieved a little bit for most educators because we do have answers, some answers for our kids. So you're right. So we join by following the hashtag. Is there a certain day and time that it takes place? But every Thursday at nine o'clock Mountain Standard Time, our time, Utah time. And I am gonna be hosting July 16th. Oh, so great. if you want to join me, um, again, it's all the topic of uh, uh, this racial unrest going on. 
with our with our nations. You're amazing, and um, we really appreciate you taking the time to share what's going on in our community so we can reach out to other educators and get these dialogues going. Thank you, Danny. It's been a pleasure. I hope to see you guys. Um, um, everyone is invited. Join the conversation. Let's make our nation better. Thank you, Bridget. We super appreciate your willingness to share with us. Now, at Some Good Education News, we are not just about sharing good news, we are about sharing some good tech tips. We have Shannon Ryrie Lyon standing by from UEN's professional development team to share with us some good Canvas tips, as well as some good news from Davis School District. Shannon, take it away. Thank you, Danny. First of all, our UEN PD team wants to give a huge shout out to Davis School District. During the last week of May, 2,200 elementary teachers were trained on Canvas. We were blown away by the organization that it took to pull off that training completely online, the excellent trainers that we saw leading all of the sessions for grade levels K to six, and then of course the spectacular teachers who showed up ready to learn and to be better prepared for online instruction. It was impressive and we are amazed by you. So well, well done. My tech tip actually comes from that training. I was in the sixth grade session listening to Alicia Madsen training and picked up my favorite quick and easy Canvas tech tip that I have learned in a while. So I love modules. I think they really help you to plan out how, what, and when you're going to be teaching things in Canvas. But if you're sending your students to the modules view, it's not the most visually appealing page. Definitely very text heavy. And especially for elementary, that can be hard if you have emerging readers. Enter the easiest thing you can do to add visuals to the module view. So the first thing you're going to do within your course is go to modules. Then you're either going to create a new module by clicking the plus module button, or if you already have one created, you're going to edit the title. You are going to put your cursor in the title portion and you're going to right click. Now this is going to look different depending on what operating system you're using, but somewhere on your list, it will say emojis and symbols. When I select that, I now have access to all of the emojis and symbols that I would have if I was on my phone texting. So let's say that I think a soccer ball works well for my title. I can click update module and that's it. This is what my students will see um, when they log in. So if I have students who aren't solid readers, I could say instead of go to why we teach coding, I could say go to the soccer ball. This also works on pages. So right here, again, I put my cursor there, right click, emojis and symbols, maybe for this one. It makes sense to use a, so a football. I click update and there it is. So it's a super easy way to add visual appeal to the modules view and it adds supports for our non and emerging readers that may need to be in the modules view. So I hope that helps. I hope you loved it as much as I did and happy canvassing. Thanks Shannon. I'm Danny Sloan and that's our show. Make sure to check out UEN's resources to keep up your summer learning. And if you need some more good news, check out the UEN Homeroom podcast. If you have your own good news, please share it on social media and use our hashtag UEN Good News or just tag one of our profiles. I'm sure they'll find it. We will see you next time. And until then, stay safe, stay kind, keep learning.